Have you ever wished you could have an inside look into a photographer's camera bag to see exactly which gear it is they're using? Well, that's what we're doing today. I'm taking you guys inside my camera bag to show you which lenses, camera bodies, and flashes I take with me to every single wedding. Before we get started, if you're a new-ish wedding photographer, make sure you grab my essential gear guide down in the video description below where we go through exactly which cameras, lenses, and flashes you need to shoot your first few weddings. This is Bite Size Business, where we're helping entrepreneurs become the hero of their own creative small business. I'm your host, Abby Grace. I'm an international wedding photographer who also loves educating for creative entrepreneurs. First up, let's talk camera bodies. So I'm a hybrid photographer, which means I shoot a combination of digital and film, using them both at the same time to achieve the desired result. So I'm gonna first take you guys through my digital cameras. So my main digital body on any wedding day or portrait session is gonna be my Canon 5D Mark III. This one's been with me for a few years. It definitely looks Looks like it's been with me for a few years and we just had the shutter replaced um, maybe two years ago and which means it's not going anywhere anytime soon um, I know the mark four has come out but I just really really love the mark three and don't really have any plans to upgrade it until I absolutely have to my backup camera body, which you should always, always have a backup for any professional gig that you're shooting, is a Canon 5D Mark II. This was actually my main body before I upgraded to the Mark III a few years ago. When it comes to my film equipment, my main film body is gonna be the Contax 645, and the lens on this is a Zeiss 80 millimeter 2.0, f2.0. Um, I love this camera. This has been my main film body since pretty much the beginning. Um, I've tried out a few others, and while they definitely do the job, I I love the feel of the contacts. Um, I love the weight of it. And while it's definitely pretty heavy, it's absolutely worth carrying around on a wedding day and in a portrait session because the results are just so beautiful. My backup film body, because like I said, you should always have a backup, is the Pentax 645N. And the lens that I have on this is a 75 millimeter 2.8. This is absolutely, if you're gonna shoot film, um, especially with the contacts, you absolutely need a backup medium format camera because the contacts will at some point stop working on you. And so we've had to call upon the Pentax in a couple of situations where the contacts just wasn't working anymore. My 35 millimeter film camera that I use is the Canon EOS 3. This fits, this fits all of my um, L series lenses for my Canon camera. So I can anything that I use on my Mark III, I can also use on the Canon EOS 3. This one I use a little bit more for like in between moments, not so much feature shots because 35 millimeter film is a smaller format, which means the like grain is gonna show up a bit more um, if you try to make enlargement. So I love using this one for more like discrete candidates. And then the last camera that I bring with me on wedding days is the Yashica 124. Um, it is a square format camera and I don't use it a ton. There's some weddings that go by that I don't use it at all, but it's just a fun little thing to have around. I love using this during cocktail hour to go around and get photos of people, like portraits of folks looking at the camera because who doesn't wanna have your photo taken by this camera? Next, let's talk about lenses. I have six lenses that I use throughout a wedding day and I've got four primes and two zooms. What a prime lens is, is a fixed focal length. That means you can't zoom in or out. If you are shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, your focal length is going to be limited to 50 millimeters. If you wanna get closer or further away, you either have to change your lens or move your feet. I love shooting with primes because what that allows me to do is open up my aperture a bit more and it gets me that super smooth creamy bokeh that I love. Um, so we'll start with prime lenses and then I'll go on to my zoom. So we're gonna start small and then get big. First up is the Canon 35 millimeter 1.4 L. So this is a little bit more of a wider lens and as such, I don't tend to use it very frequently for portraits just because I'm not in love with how it distorts around the edges of the frame. Um, that's just me though. There are some photographers who could shoot a whole portrait session with just the 35. So it definitely depends on what your personal preferences are. Uh, I tend to use this one more for fleeting moments throughout a wedding day. Um, things that are happening a little bit more quickly because it is a fast to focus lens and I love that about the 35. So if I'm shooting something that's going by super quickly, I will most often break out my 35. Next up is my 50 millimeter 1.2 L. This lens is my baby. I love this one so much. Um, this is actually my second version of this because I just drove the first one into the ground. That's how much I use it. This one is on my camera for the majority of any portrait session, the majority of any wedding day. And um, what I love about the 50 is that this renders pretty close to how the human eye sees. And so it feels very natural. Um, and I love that it's a little bit closer than the 35 and it's got minimal distortion. I mean, in case you guys are wondering where these yellow back caps are from, um, these are from Photo Deox. I'll link to them in the show notes. And the reason that I choose to use these is because these are just easier and quicker to spot in the bottom of your camera bag when you're packing up at the end of a long wedding day and let's say you're in a dark reception space. 
Next up is the 85mm 1.2 out. This is a fantastic lens for anyone who's looking to blur out a background. So if I'm shooting in like a city and there's a bunch of stuff going on in the background and I want to draw my focus really to my couple and eliminate distractions in the background, the 85 is generally what I will break out if I've got enough room because it is a, it is a closer crop than the 50mm. Um, but the way that this renders bokeh is just absolutely beautiful. A general rule um, for like longer zoom lenses is the longer the zoom, the more that's going to compress your background. And so something like a 35 millimeter, if you're shooting a 35 millimeter lens at 1.2, uh, 1.4, and then an 85 millimeter lens at 1.4 with the exact same settings across the board, your background is going to be softer with the 85, much softer with the 85 than with a 35 millimeter, because again, that zoom compresses the background. So this is a great one also for like outdoor ceremonies where you don't want to get too close, but you still want those nice close intimate shots. Last prime on our list is the 100 millimeter 2.8 L macro. So of all my lenses, this one probably spends the least amount of time on my camera. And that's because I really only break it out when I'm photographing something like the rings or like the invitation suite where I want to get really close in on details and want to make sure that they're razor sharp. Again, it's a personal preference. I know some photographers who love using this for portraits or love using this for toasts. Um, but for me, I tend to only really use it during the bride's details. Next up are my zoom lenses. So the first of my two is the 24-70 to 2.8L. This is a really versatile lens. You can go super wide and then also come in relatively close. This is on my camera for about 25% of a wedding day, but I know photographers, actually the photographer who trained me, he could shoot a whole wedding on just the 24-70. I love that the further in you zoom, the more that compresses the background. So at 70 millimeters, you could easily use this for portraits. Um, and this is definitely one of the first, rec first lenses that I recommend buy. This is the first lens that I bought when I I decided to become a professional wedding photographer. Um, so the thing that I love about this for folks who haven't defined their style maybe yet is that you have so many options from 24 to 70 millimeters. So if you're new and you're starting out and you're not sure what you should buy next, definitely consider renting the 24 to 70 because you might absolutely fall in love with it. Last on our list is the 70 to 200 2.8L. So this lens is a beast. It's pretty heavy and I don't shoot with it too frequently on a wedding day just because it's so big that it's hard to shoot quickly. Um, but I will use this maybe like 10 to 15% of a wedding day, most frequently during a ceremony when I'm kept to the back of a church and I still wanna be able to get close. One thing I do love about this lens is that when you're shooting it at 200 millimeter, the background is so creamy soft. I know some photographers who love this one for portraits because you can stand pretty far back and that allows your clients to interact really naturally without them feeling like there's a camera in their face. So if you're not sure if you would love this lens, definitely make sure you guys give it a rent before you buy it. Moving on to lighting. So the flashes I use on wedding days are the Canon 600 EX RTs. I love these. I have three of them that I bring with me to every wedding. I could not shoot a reception without these. The reason that I love these so much is for a couple reasons. One, their recycle time is pretty fast. Two, I never have trouble with these misfiring. And three, most importantly, is that the radio triggers are built in. So before I had the 600s, I was shooting with the 580 EXs, and those don't have a trigger built in. So I was having to use pocket wizards to fire my off-camera flash. But because these have the remote trigger built in, all I need is one camera on flash and one camera off, and this one will trigger the off-camera flash, which is amazing, because it means it's just that much less equipment that I have to bring with me, and that many fewer things that can go wrong in terms of firing your off-camera flash. Lastly, we've got a couple of knickknacks. I've got my light meter, which is the Sekonic L858D. Um, this is what I use when I'm shooting film and metering for light. It was really important to me that I have not only a bulb for incident readings, but also spot metering capability, and that's what the 858 has. Then I also have my arsenal of double A batteries. These are Eneloops. I like the multicolored ones. Got a couple of plain white ones too. And these are rechargeable. Before I was using rechargeable batteries, I went through so many double A's and it was killing me how many of those I was sending to a landfill. So I've had these rechargeables for probably five years at this point. I mean, while they definitely don't last as long as when I first got them, they're still trucking along just fine and I probably won't have to replace them for a while. So I really like these. We'll link to these in the show notes below so you guys can grab these on B&H. That's all I've got for you guys today. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. I would love to answer those. I'll also be linking to all of the resources that I mentioned today down in the show notes below. Here on Bite Size Business, we share a lot of strategy for creative entrepreneurs as well as tips and tricks for growing photographers. So if you found today's video helpful, make sure you guys hit subscribe because there's a lot more where that came from. We'll see you guys next Friday.